So on Amazon, this CPU cooler has over 750 reviews, two thirds of them giving it a five star rating. It's not your typical CPU cooler. The heatsink design is optimized for passive cooling. And so it doesn't come with a fan. So today's objective is to find out how effective this thing actually is just having a bit of fun. And we're gonna see if this thing can cool a current gen six core CPU like the Ryzen 5 3600. Now, spoiler alert, even if you're not interested in passive cooling, that's fine. Uh, this video sort of explores also what happens when CPUs reach their thermal limit of around 100 degrees C, what happens in terms of frequency, voltage, and also power. So again, even if you're not interested in passive cooling, this video is a bit of fun. All right, so this is the Alpine AM4 Passive from Arctic. It's a completely passive CPU cooler for AMD's Ryzen CPUs. The TDP rating for this cooler is just 47 watts. So not looking too strong on paper, if I'm honest, even when compared to something like the stock Wraith Stealth cooler. But judging by some of the user reviews online, the results are very mixed for this cooler. Some say that it can barely cool a quad core APU, while others claim it can keep an eight core 1700X under control. Control. Now, one thing I will mention straight away is that the packaging for this cooler is literally the bare minimum that you can get away with. It's just thin cardboard, no foam, no interior padding or anything like that. In my case, the cooler actually suffered some serious damage upon arrival. This is what it looks like after I actually bent the outer fin back into shape. I doubt that it'll affect our results in any significant way, but if you are shipping this cooler internationally, it is definitely something to keep in mind. Now, the actual design of a a passive CPU cooler is a lot different compared to one that's actively cooled by a fan. With high performance CPU coolers from Noctua, for example, the heatsink design is optimized through a very dense thin array, a cold plate usually made of copper and as many heat pipes as you can fit. With passive CPU coolers, natural convection and ambient airflow inside the case is what's going to dissipate the heat. This means no high pressure fans driving air through a dense fin stack. Instead, there is ample room between the fins for air to pass through. Now, personally, I really struggled to find a useful application for truly passive cooling and silent operation, as I've always found the quietest cooling solutions to also be the strongest ones. For example, a Noctua NHD15 with fans spinning at just 700 RPM is going to be miles more effective than even the best passive air coolers, but noise levels aren't going to be that much louder, especially with normal ambient environment noise. All right, so let's start by looking at how the Arctic Passive AM4 handles the R5-3600. I installed the test system inside the Streetcom DA2 without any case fans, so we are going for a completely passive setup here. I will mention though that there is plenty of case ventilation at the bottom and top to permit the natural convection. Looking at thermals to begin with, the idle temperatures zigzag between 78 and 86 degrees C, and when we put it through a run of Cinebench, the R5-3600 hits 95 C almost immediately and maintains that throughout the duration of the benchmark. I did anticipate that the cooler would eventually hit 95C, although I did think that it would soak it up a little bit more. Instead though, it is pretty much instant. Now proving the immense difference between a passive and actively cooled heatsink design, when we try and cool the Arctic AM4 passive with an active fan, even running at 1700 RPM, it's just not that effective at all. The CPU still exceeds 90 degrees C. So here's a look at what CPU throttling looks like in full force. In an effort to not crash the entire system and destroy the user's critical work, the CPU throttles its own voltage and clock speeds to produce less heat and maintain stability of the system. Over the course of the benchmark, we see the R5 3600 drop from around 3.5 gigahertz all core to about 3.3. Looking at the CPU package power as recorded from Hardware Info, we do see it drop from around 50 watts to just 41 watts. And do note that it is still declining, although it does seem to be leveling off gradually. If we ran a longer benchmark, let's say a 15 minute blender render, for example, we'd probably see the drop close to 30 watts, or maybe the system would even crash. For the safety of the CPU though, we're going to avoid running it that hot for so long. And lastly, for the R5 3600, a look 
look at CPU voltage dropping from 1.05 volts to around 0.95 volts. And again, we do see it start to level off there. Next, let's take a look at the R5-3400G, a processor that produces less heat than the R5-3600 and should have a much better chance at being passively cooled. Unfortunately though, we do still reach that 95 degree ceiling. In a gaming application with the Vega graphics pushing even some more heat, there'd be even a lower chance of this processor being cooled passively. The clock speeds here aren't much better than the 3600. The 3400G can hold 3.9 GHz stable for a few seconds, but then eventually stabilizes to around 3.2. Running CPUs north of 90 degrees C consistently is not something that you want to do if you care about the longevity of your system, but as we can see here, the hardware can cope. The actual cooling potential of the Arctic AM4 passive is likely a lot closer to something like the 3200G, so if you want to run a completely passive and silent APU gaming system on that, then it's probably possible there. Potentially for a low power home office budget system, it could also be useful there too. Beyond that, if you really want a silent gaming system, you're much better off with an overkill cooling solution and just limiting your fan speeds to say 500 to 1000 RPM. You also have to consider that no real gaming PC can actually be truly silent. There is going to be audible noise from the GPU contributed by power and coil wine, and that's going to be a lot more annoying than a couple of fans at 500 RPM. So why are people buying this passive CPU cooler? After the testing in this video, I'm not any closer to understanding why. Uh, I guess people are using it in really low power systems. And to there, I guess it does have some merit if you don't really care about the thermals too much and you just really want a truly silent uh, CPU cooler operation. I guess if you guys can find a useful application for the CPU cooler, perhaps you have a home office system that needs to run absurdly quiet, and doesn't have that much power requirements, then I will leave it linked down below. As always guys, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.